What's happening guys, JR Rimmon back again, coming to you from Bowler X Pro Shop and Training Center inside Waterford Lanes. Uh, and today I'm actually gonna talk to you about the core of a bowling ball a little bit because I had a lot of people after we discussed how the core changes and how a layout can change and whatnot. Um, we've had a lot of people ask and say, why don't you just use a real core? Like put a core in your hand and, and kind of demonstrate. And I'm gonna try to do that a little bit because before, you know, I talked about how the uh, when when you're laying the ball out, like say that you know this is the top of the core, and you're putting your fingers there, and this is the pin. So let's just say that's the pin right there. You're putting your fingers there, and then when you rotate the ball, like it's going to rotate this way until it finds its way to a stable layout, like or to a stable roll, just like this, where it finally finds its way to roll forward, just like that, at the at the the optimal axis that it needs. So if we take that same concept and we take it with the core itself and say, this is the top of the core, and now we're actually going pin up and we're putting it right here. We're laying it out just like this and we roll the ball. Now, when we actually flip it and we spin it, now it's spinning this way and it's coming off our hand this way, right? So now you got the pin going up and down and eventually it tries to find its way to this, this is where its preferred axis is going to be, where it starts rolling like this. But when it's wobbling like this, this is what creates that motion heading down lane. So you gotta keep that in mind, okay? So now if I take this again, and instead of going pin up, we go like, and we transition and we switch this to where we go way over here. Now the pin's on the other side of the fingers. And now when I roll and my hand is in the ball this way and I roll it, now it's flip-flopping with that towards the side a little bit more. And then if, and this has to actually find its way back this way. And then it starts to find its way back this way, all the way until it gets to here, right? Because it's trying to find that preferred spin again. So it's not gonna just keep flopping like this all the way down. That's how these cores change motion. They start, they're flopping, they're flopping, they're flopping. And then they're trying to get to where they're actually stable rolling down lane. You gotta keep that in mind. You gotta think about these things when you're laying these out. So that's why you can say, okay, if this part's trying to get to its stable roll over here and go to here, if we lay this out to where the pin is, instead of being like this, where the, where the pin is up, and we lay this out where it's like that, where the pin is way over here, like, you know, basically seven, eight inches away. Now, instead of flaring and trying to go all the way back to this way, it just says, nope, I'm just gonna go bloop just to here and it's gonna roll that way. So it almost actually inverts. So if you start it like this, you think it's going to, it's gonna wobble just a little bit, but then it's gonna invert flare and go backwards this way rather than wobbling this way and then trying to find its way all the way back around like it was before. So pay attention to these things because it makes a, uh, makes a big difference when you lay these things out. And it's the same thing like if you go pin down you're going like this with the pin down below in the bridge. Now, as you roll and you flip and you roll the ball, it's the same type of thing. It's gonna give you that same type of, same amount of distance, but the you're changing the weight of the core, you're changing how this thing flops, you're changing how everything gets to that stable point and how long it takes to go from here flopping around like this down the lane to here to where it's just a stable roll like that. So. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better visual. If not, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It's really hard to demonstrate. Uh, there was an app, there was a program that was called Blueprint that I really enjoyed. Um, I think would be great if that could be brought back. Um, I know it's still out there and still kind of usable, but I don't think it gets updated as often anymore. So it's not like all the bowling balls are in there. We need another app like that. Like honestly, if you can just put a bowling ball and lay it out and show that core and you could see how that core is going to roll and transition based on the layout that you put on it. Could you imagine the, like the, the use you could get out of an app like that or something? Which reminds me also, I do have an app coming. It's not gonna be like that, but it is going to tell you all about your arsenal. It's gonna tell you about the moves you make out when you're bowling tournaments, all your statistics. It's going to suggest moves, suggest ball changes. Whenever you ask it to, it's gonna be you just wait and you see. So anyway, um, if you haven't already, go buy my books. And uh, yeah, that's really all I got for you. I just kind of wanted to show you that and see if that helped you get a little bit of a visual of how these things flop around in the bowling ball. So if you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to get to them as much as I can. That's something I'm kind of, that's one of my goals for the rest of the year is to try to get to more comments and be able to comment back a little bit more and uh, even make videos on some of your comments and stuff. 
without being mean. It's the whole not being mean thing that I have a hard time with, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, give me a break. Anyway, that's all I got. I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later.